can a homeowner pick which battery backup is ideal for their home? We're going to be answering this question in today's video. Let's get started. Hi everyone, Martino with Solar Time here, and for the past 13 years, I've been part of a solar family business. This channel will focus on solar and storage facts. I want to provide you with reliable information in a nutshell so you, the future system owner, can install the most reliable system. Please watch the video, ask questions, give us some feedback, and subscribe. As a woman, many may think we can't do this, and I will prove you wrong. Okay, how do I start this? This was a very hard video to prepare for. It is an extremely broad subject to cover. There are many things that the backup can include, not include, be built out of, so many options out in the market that it becomes overwhelming. Which one is the best? It is also rather a new thing for an average homeowner to consider batteries when going solar. A lot of it is caused by extreme weather conditions, causing damage to the grid and leaving people without power, but also a big increase in electric vehicle industry. So now manufacturers put out a product, battery product, they hear the early adapters cry for changes and updates, and then they implement them, improving it. It is all rather new. So today we're covering the basics of getting a battery backup. I do want to add that if you already have a solar system, most inverters can retrofit a battery back to it now or in the future, so you don't have to worry whether your system is battery ready. Today we're covering four main points. One, why should you install a battery backup? Two, main battery chemistry and technology types. Three, battery configurations such as DC and AC coupling. And finally, we will talk about the biggest players in the market in 2022 and what to look out for when getting quotes. Before I get to these points, I want to add a few things, so let me get that out of the way. When talking about backup options, you the homeowner, me the homeowner, we want to make sure that these systems are one, reliable, and two, safe. One thing I feel like a lot of people want to focus on is the advanced technology and accessing everything through your phone via the internet. I might share a bit controversial opinion, but I believe that backup should be as easy as possible. Think about it like this. There's a snowstorm, power lines are down, and you want to use your battery you spent thousands of dollars for. But boom, the internet is down too, and you have no internet to access your app on your phone. You have power but limited control where your power is actually going and what state of charge even is. You want to be able to do most things manually if that happens. You also want it to be easy and work so you don't have to worry about it. I mean, it's cool to be able to turn the light on with your phone, but you should also be able to do it with your hand. So buying battery just for the sake of a cool app that controls it all definitely sounds very attractive, but you should also look at available applications and being able to control it manually as well. Second thing I really want to get across is that when buying backup, you have to understand and set your expectations, and those should also be properly explained, explained by the representative that you work with. If they tell you one 10 kilowatt hour battery will do it all for you and you live in a small home in California, great. But if they say the same thing to you, Texan homeowner, then they know nothing about what our usage is here. So just be aware that each state has their own climate. Some states might have a mild temperature all year round. Some will have extreme heat in the summer and a need for multiple AC units. In Dallas, Texas, we have 70 degrees one day and then 34 the next. So this is not a one-size-fits-all type of situation. It will all depend on your needs too, when the grid is down. So when you invest your money, you wanna know exactly what it'll do for you. If the quote you get says whole home backup, but no load analysis was done, don't believe it. Contrary to popular belief, one power wall will not do it all. <laughs> With backup, you also must understand that a lot of it will depend on you. The biggest question we always get is, how long will this last me? And I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to give you one gallon of water. How long will it last you? Lastly, you have to understand battery backup is not cheap. 
definitely more expensive than its biggest competitor, a whole home generator. Rule of thumb is fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for a ten to fifteen kilowatt hour backup. Now, this is not an investment that is making making you money. This is a luxury for you. If you want to feel like you have more control of where your power is going, or if you want to feel more secure, then this is something to consider. But if you want this to pay for itself, just know it won't. All right, moving on. So let's start with the reason why you should consider buying backup. One, you live in an area with time of use charges. What that means is you get charged, for example, 33 cents from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then during 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., 53 cents. So a much higher rate. Look at the sample plan available in California. All solar generation happens during the day. So if you're not home and you're not consuming that power, you could store it in your battery and use it, discharge it when the peak charges are present. If this is the reason that you're buying the backup, you should focus on the ones that have the longest warranty for the highest number of cycles with low degradation. And the ones that offer the ability to set the discharge to certain hours depending on the tariffs that you have. Two, backup. If you experience power outages often and for extended period of time and you wanna be able to stay warm or cold, this one is more of a convenience reason to buy backup, sometimes even a necessity if you have a life sustaining machines for a family member. In Texas last year, we had an extreme weather event. We had freezing temperatures and our house was without power from Monday through Thursday. We were blessed enough to have SMA secure power supply, which gave us solar power from our system during the sunshine hours with no battery. But those who didn't could have had damages from freezing pipes, pools being damaged, and just inconvenient and scary not being able to keep your family warm. So if you're looking for a backup in an outage, you can consider batteries and make sure your storage is sized to your needs. You can also consider a whole home generator, which I probably should do a next video about as well. Now getting back to one 10 kilowatt hour battery doing it all for you. An average home in California consumes about 6,000 kilowatt hours per year or 16 kilowatt hours per day. So one 10 kilowatt hour backup will be plenty of storage to stay okay. Now in Texas, this is a different story. Our usage is closer to 14,000 kilowatt hours per year or around 40 per day. Some homes like ours consume even 120 kilowatt hours per day. So one or even two batteries will not do much for us. Now you may ask, why can I just use my solar system in an outage without a battery? If you don't have a storage system and you use your utility to store credits with, you kind of coexist with them. If there is an outage due to their broken power lines that must be fixed and your system stayed on, you would be able to backfeed to the grid and potentially harm a lineman who is trying to restore power. This is why solar systems in the world are programmed to shut off when the grid is down. Battery chemistry. There are two most popular types. One of them I am a bigger fan of. First one being LFP, lithium iron phosphate battery, and second one NMC, nickel magnesium cobalt. There's some major differences to both. LFP is your safer option because it has a higher resistance to thermal runaway. Thermal runaway is a phenomenon in which lithium ion cell enters an uncontrollable self-heating state. LFP do not react to heat as much as NMC battery. They don't set on fire or explode under pressure, so they're much safer. The NMC batteries are lighter and will be smaller. This is why they're primarily used in the electric vehicles. Surprisingly, the LFP are the cheaper option because iron and phosphate that make the battery are more abundant on our planet. NMC batteries do have a higher energy density, which means it would give you a bigger power surge, and this is another reason for their use in EV industry. Now, if you already decided on a battery, I would definitely recommend your garage or basement as your installation place. If you do use your garage, I would stick with the side walls and not directly in front of your vehicle. Accidents happen and you do not want to drive into your battery, especially if you're using NMC chemistry. Another reason for putting them indoors is more controlled climate. These batteries will have an operating temperature range and perform best in milder temperatures. 
Heat is the worst thing that can speed up the degradation of your battery, so keep it out of extreme temperatures. So who uses what kind of chemistry? So far, Emphase, Tygo, Zonin, BYD all use LFP chemistry, whereas Generac, Solar Edge, and Tesla use NMC. A lot of people also ask about other technologies like nickel ion, flow, or even salt water batteries, but we have yet to see one that will beat the NMC and LFP in performance and price. Okay, now let's talk about AC versus DC coupling. If you watched my inverter video, you know panels output DC, and then the inverter converts it to AC that is then used in your home. Now batteries charge and discharge in DC electricity. So you have two options to connect your batteries to your system. More popular one is AC coupling, and what that means is that you have your solar system with its solar inverter, and then you connect your battery with its battery inverter. This option is a little bit more popular because a lot of existing systems can now retrofit a battery that way. Some battery manufacturers have a built-in inverter already in the box, like the Tesla Powerwall. You might have thought it's just a battery, but it actually has a built-in inverter as well. Same for Zonin Core and Enphase. So whether you have an existing solar system or you're in the process of buying one, you can connect your battery that way. The second option is DC coupling. In this case, this is a hybrid inverter for both solar and the battery. So direct current from the panels can charge batteries without the additional DC to AC, AC to DC conversion. This option is used by companies like Tygo, Solark, SolarEdge, Fronius, and Generac. Either one will work. DC coupling will definitely have fewer stops, which means fewer losses. I personally don't have a preference. If you're installing a solar system now and plan to add batteries in the future, you're fine spending less money now by going with just the solar inverter than AC coupling a battery into it in the future. But if you plan to get storage now, you can go ahead and do either option. I will always say this, as long as the manufacturer is solid, you're good either way. Now finally, what are the biggest players and what you need to look out for? Each battery backup option will come with many specifications and there will be another video when we talk about each individual one in detail. Again, I can't keep you here for hours at a time. But what you can look out for now is usable capacity, continuous power output, peak power output for starting out those big loads like HVAC units, voltage range, amperage output, and finally warranty. The peak and continuous power is very important in order to determine what loads can be powered by your backup in an off-grid mode. For example, if a Tygo backup system has a peak output of six kilowatts and continuous output of five, you must be able to determine what in your home can be placed on a critical load panel. Your solar installer should be able to provide you with a load analysis to figure this out. If they can't, I would walk away. Now warranty will be very important. Depending on whether you plan to exercise your battery on a daily basis for time of use charges or if you want to keep it for backup emergencies, batteries tend to come with a warranty for the number of cycle or years used, whichever one comes sooner. Standard will be 10 years or three to 10,000 cycles, but those with less than 5,000 cycles should not be considered in my opinion. As far as my recommendations, if safety is your concern, I would focus on manufacturers that use LFP chemistry, such as SMA Sunny Boy Storage paired with BYD battery, Enphase IQ battery, Zonin Core, Solark hybrid inverter that can be paired with any LFP 48 volt battery, and finally, Tygo. As I always repeat, which I'm sure you're tired of it, as long as the manufacturer is solid, the product should be as well. And even if they make a mistake, as early adaptations, they will fix their issue. So make sure the producer of your backup system is a solid company with long history of inverter production. Those guys know what they're doing. Okay, we made it to the end. <laughs> I really hope this video helped you get the basics of battery backup. Please leave questions below and ideas for what battery backup we should discuss in more detail and I'll get to work researching and reviewing each individual one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week and remember the sun will never send you an electric bill.